Greetings once again, Shinobi, Dues Days Den, back again with Boruto. But something has changed, yes, previously. As Kawaki lamented the heavy burden of having sealed Naruto and Hinata away so that they wouldn't get in his way with his attempt to end the Osutsuki, namely, and Boruto, and as he became public enemy number one of the Leaf Village, with no one knowing what he'd done with the Hokage and his wife, Ada found Kawaki, and with Kawaki's lament that he wished Boruto was just some nobody who no one would miss if he killed, this accidentally activated Ada's true ability, the ability that allows her to have control over so many people, excluding those with Otsutsuki bloodlines and for some reason, Sarada and Sumire. But Ada's omnipotus affects the entire world, inversing everyone's perception of Kawaki and Boruto, making it so that Boruto was the outsider who came to the village, and Kawaki was the Hokage's firstborn son. With even certain events such as when Kawaki sliced Boruto's eye being perceived as something that happened to Kawaki because of Boruto. But as everyone chased down Boruto, believing him to be Kawaki, even Sasuke, Sarada confronted her dad, begging him to help Boruto. With the desperation of the situation and the potential loss of someone who she cherished, and looked up to, namely the Hokage, this activated her Mangekyo Sharingan, convincing Sasuke to do what he can for Boruto, knowing the truth, but being uneasy about it. But most, to, much to Momoshiki's utter bewilderment, when he thought that Boruto would despair at his situation, Boruto rose to the occasion. He was determined to set things right, with even Ada, a bit displeased by Kawaki's decision to roll with what had happened, even supports Boruto to some degree. In fact, Boruto kind of takes responsibility for what had happened. He had previously asked Kawaki to kill him should Momoshiki take control, and believing it would be something that his father would do, he's determined to bring Kawaki to his senses. He's definitely his father's son. Elsewhere, Code who's still amassing an army of bits of the ten tails, now swears to take down Boruto, not Kawaki, with even him being affected by what's happened. So with Code out for vengeance for Jigen, Kawaki out to take Boruto the Otsutsuki, Boruto stands with determination to prove who he is. So join me as I find out who exactly is Boruto Uzumaki after all this time, and just what the heck two blue vortexes mean. And just like the original Boruto series, this is Boruto, two blue vortex, chapter one, Boruto. Though not Boruto Uzumaki. I gotta say, while I do like this cover, it just kind of looks like the wind is causing his cape to just get all up in his face like, ah, oh, ah. Oh. We also had the updated design for Sarada, which, <laughs> I don't even know how to comment on this. I mean, it's a nice outfit, all things considered. And oddly enough, the black and red immediately makes me think of Akatsuki. I'm just curious how this will look at the anime, because Ikimoto's uh, preferences tend to shine out a lot more than not. Alright, so we pick up with Sarada inside the Hokage's office, which looks like it was Shikamaru who took over. Hmm, is that Konohamaru? So Sarada is telling Shikamaru, I've explained it to you over and over. Why don't you understand? And Shikamaru says, Right back at you, Sarada. We gave him many chances. He crossed the line first. Remember, he's a traitor who killed the Hokage and tried to kill his son Kawaki too. He cannot go unpunished. Sarada tells him, Like I said before, your entire premise is wrong. Bruto would never kill Lord Seven. At least give him a chance to tell his side of things. Konohamaru says, Why'd he run if he's not guilty? We also have Ada Senringan eyewitness testimony. Sarada says, If someone ordered your death, wouldn't you run too? Please rescind the order and hear him out. Sasuke, oh, <laughs> said Sasuke. Shikamaru sits down and says, Listen, Sarada, the sanction against Boruto isn't just in line with Kanoha laws. It's the will of our people. Many of those living here are still angry about his betrayal. So even if I lift my order, people will stay unconvinced. <sighs> 
I feel bad for Sarada. He's trying to convince people who have been essentially brainwashed. Shikamaru tells her, this is the last time we will speak of this. Now get back to your mission. Sarada <laughs> just shouts at him, calling him a blockhead. And Konohamaru says, hey Sarada. This is Lord Aeth you're mouthing off at. Ah, Konohamaru. Chikamaru says, enough Konohamaru. Sarada, I'm worried about you. At this rate, forget Hokage. You'll never be more than a Genin. Which, is like, <sighs> Chikamaru, I get where you're coming from, but all things considered, think about Naruto. He believed in someone who was seen as a traitor to the village, and he became Hokage despite never being more than a Genin. I don't know, man. <laughs> feels like he kind of wrong here but it's hard to judge him too much because he's wrong for reasons beyond his control sarada turns away from him and says because my dad's a traitor too just like boruto shikamaru says this has nothing to do with sasuke i'm talking solely about your future as a kanoha shinobi sarada continues not to look at him and says lord seventh once brought my dad Back my dad who'd gone rogue and committed great crimes. He became Hokage while still a Genin. Shikamaru has no response to this. And as Sarada finally looks at Shikamaru <laughs> with a very cold look in her eyes, she tells him, My role model is Lord Seventh, not to you. Mm -mm -mm. <sighs> so they've really just been trapped here for how many years have gone past? They pick up with In the Dimension, where Kawaki has sealed away Naruto and Hinata. On the one hand, that you're not gonna age much. In this dimension, it seems that only Kawaki can move. As so he looks upon the two people who used to be essentially parents to him. Oh man, is that Sumire? <laughs> that outfit. I'm sorry, that outfit just feels like someone's fetish. <laughs> The thing about Ikimoto and the heels that he gives some of the female characters. It just... Just those heels, man! But we pick up with Sarada walking with Sumire. The Sarada saying, I was really harsh again. Even though I know it's not Master Shikamaru's fault. Yes. Honestly, I'm glad that it was both Sarada and Sumire because just imagine being alone in knowing what happened. Dude, I'd go crazy. Because you can't talk with anyone about it. Sumire says, Due to Ada's omnipotence, nobody even recognizes that something isn't quite right. In fact, to them, we're the ones who are weird. Sarada doesn't respond. And Sumire continues, saying, To them, Kawaki has always been the seventh Hokage's son. Kawaki Uzumaki. That's the simple truth. And Sarada speaks up saying, And Boruto's a rebellious outsider. An ungrateful traitor. Sumire looks away yeah that it sucks too because it seemed like kawaki and sumire had a bit of a thing going on too so mm. sarada says early on everyone still sent some of the paradox like how could kara have modified kawaki's body if he'd been born and raised in the village. And what happened to Momoshiki? Even Master Shikamaru handed Kawaki about that. But that slight unease also slowly dissipated over time thanks to omnipotence. So that now, no one has any doubts left. Yeah, so it was a situation where if you had maybe corrected it early on, it you know, might have been okay. Something that could have helped to prove certain things. But leaving it alone for... Again, however, however many years have passed, I think I heard it was four? Ah, I, I don't like the idea that four years have passed. Ugh, I barely like the idea of three. Two years? I can kind of be okay with two years, but if it's really been a l almost five years, dang. Sarda says, how are we supposed to counter such a ridiculous ability? They then meet with Ada and Damon, who haven't changed at all. Is that because of their biology? What they are, essentially? Huh, weird. Again. Ikimoto in them legs. Damon says, you still ain't giving up? It's an unwinnable game, you know? <laughs> uh, I just inherently want to have Damon speak with a Brooklyn accent for some reason. Ada tells them, I have no control over omnipotence, just like my ability to charm. Though recently, we've at least started to understand how it works. Sarda says, how could I give up? Any new information? Ada says, what we know right now is that omnipotence is a type of otsutsuki shinjutsu that makes one's desires real, and that it was Kawaki's desire that created our current circumstances. Everyone's memories were chained. Everything they remembered about Boruto and Kawaki was rewritten, resulting 
resulting in the two switching position. I wonder about Himawari though. What's going on with her? Sarada questions, is there no way to reverse it? Ada says, I don't know. But it's no use talking to those who were affected by omnipotence. They'll never understand. Sarada then questions, but why? The actual truth is reasonable enough that we simply need to explain it properly. Ada tells her, think about it. Are you the one who, whose memories are considered flawed? So who'd take you seriously? Sarda has no response. Ada goes on to say, To be brutally frank, I'd give up trying to return things to the way they were. It'd be more practical to just rewrite different memories, though there's risk in that too. <laughs> yeah, jeez. Just double rewrite things. <laughs> what could go wrong? Sumire perks up saying, No way. Ada then says, In any case, I still find it mystifying how the two of you manage to retrain your memories when you're not Otsutsuki. I mean, it is a good point. Like, why have they still been okay? And do the... Does does Ada know that her charm doesn't work on the two of them? It sucks when the person you, one of the few people you can talk to is someone who essentially you were told, hey, dig them out if you have to. But the thing is, they couldn't even if they wanted to. Now, it's been said that killing Ada won't change the omnipotence, so it is only through her that they have any chance of potentially getting things back to the way they were before, or some semblance of it. Ada says, both omnipotence and charm have no effect on Otsutsuki. They also don't work on family members like Damon, but you two are neither. Are you sure about that? How are you able to retain your true memories? Or more importantly, are you sure but you're both really my captives? <laughs> Naturally, both Sumire and Sarda <laughs> shut their traps immediately. Sumire remembers Shikamaru's words. Listen, make sure you're not found out, especially by Damon who's giving them that eye, like, make a move, I'll kill you, give me a reason, I'll kill you. If her charm doesn't work on you, it means it's possible for you to kill Ada. You get what I'm saying? If they catch on, your lives may be in danger. Gotta love how we started this off by not acknowledging Shikamaru's words, and now we're at the point where it's just like, no, Shikamaru was probably right on the money about that. You don't know what's gonna happen with these two. Samira then says, oh please, we've told you over and over. Sar and I were just putting up a front to hide our feelings. I mean, come on, no one can escape being charmed by you, right? Oof. Gotta love those dead eyes Damon and Ada give people. Gotta love the look on Sarda's face like, Okay, I'm ready to run if this gets hairy. But Ada says, True, that's what I believe. And Samaria says, See? But Damon just got that look at them. We then cut over to Kaoki. He looks, it looks like he's at the houses they were staying at that they were supposed to share with Ada and Damon. Uh, Mitsuki then arrives, and Kawaki says, Cool your bloodthirst, Mitsuki. It's totally suffocating. Mitsuki says, I'm sure Boruto still wants to kill you, and he's a Suski just like you. So it's quite possible he's mastered the ability to erase his chakra signature. Kawaki says, If he comes here, I'll feel, it'll, I'll feel it right away. Even if he eludes the sentry unit, he can't trick me. I kn you know that. Mitsuki says, I want to protect you. I will kill him. I swear it. Kawaki says, sure, do as you please, just quit following ar me around like some sick perv, it's annoying. I feel bad for Mitsuki. I mean, he, he barely got any attention in the Boruto manga as is, but to now have this. Poor Mitsuki. I, I kind of wish he was also not affected as well. Mitsuki says, but Kawaki here. Suddenly someone contacts Kawaki saying, Kawaki, search squad here. We found claw marks outside the wall. Kawaki asks where. And then he begins to float. They tell him, east of Sector C. Kawaki says, stay where you are. I'll be right there. And he flies off. And as Mitsuki watches, he says to himself, you're the sun shining brightly upon my moon. But he pauses and says, aren't you, Kawaki? So, ah oh man, I hope, come on Mitsuki, come on man. Be a big character moment if he can like break free of this somehow. Cause if you really cared about Boruto as much as you say you do. I want to see Mitsuki break free of this at some point. Oh, is this Himawari? Training with Chocho? Huh, interesting. Himawari goes in for a kick. Chocho blocks it with her hand. Chocho goes in for a punch. Himawari manages to leap off of Chocho's hand. She then leaps into the air throwing kunai down. <laughs> nice. Chocho inflates herself and uses the wind to blow herself back. 
then uses human boulder to go rolling into the air, then uses a partial expansion jutsu as Himawari braces herself. Chocho manages to just snatch her right out the air. And as Chocho places Himawari on the ground, up, up comes someone saying, Yeesh, you shouldn't have carelessly jumped upward. Ah, uh, she could die. Ugh, Inojin, what is that haircut, man? Ugh, it's got a bowl cut. And I, I miss Inojin's previous hair, jeez. As she could die says, that said, your moves are exceptionally sharp. You are Kawaki's little sis, all right. Inojin says, nice fight, you did well, Himawari. Chacha says, that first kick was super good, crazy solid. Himawari says, really? And as the four of them sit down on the ground, Inojin questions, but Himawari, why do you want to get so strong? Himawari says, it's not that I want to get strong. It's just, okay, I feel like everyone in Kanoa would yell at me for saying this, but, you know, uh, Shikidai says, huh? Himori says, I, uh, kind of want to help Boruto, you see. Shikidai says, what? Inojin goes, whoa, you don't really mean that, do you? And Chocho says, that ain't funny. Himori says, sorry, I know it sounds wacky, but how do I put it? Whatever... What everyone says about him is totally different from what I remember of him. Shikadai goes, uh, he killed your dad, remember? And Himawari says, I don't think he did. I mean, Shikadai listens intently. And Himawari says, I saw with my own eyes him risking his life to protect my dad and me. Such a person wouldn't kill my dad. There has to be some explanation. If that is the case, Boruto's gotta be in deep trouble. And Oji calls out to Himawari. And Himawari looks to the sky saying, Besides, I have this feeling that my dad is still alive somewhere. Okay. The people closest to Boruto, and, and even to a certain degree Kawaki, they know something's up. They feel something's off here. I wish to a certain degree it was more than just them, but I'm glad at least a few people are just like, something ain't adding up. But even Sarada said previously, there were those who just felt like something just didn't quite add up. It was time that caused them to kind of accept things as they were. Again, because nothing really proved anything to the contrary of what they thought. Uh, we then pick up with Kawaki, who uses his eye techniques to shrink the claw mark outside of Kanoha, the leaf village. The ninja come up, I'm guessing sensory ninja, saying good. That's the last of the claw marks around here. Thanks, Kawaki. But I don't get code. Why well, come so near so frequently, but not attack, especially when or he's got several thousand soldiers? He has an especially strong grudge against Boruto, right? Maybe he's prioritizing that battle over Kanoha? Your theory that we've escaped harm thanks to Boruto not being here does have merit to it. You know, it'd be great if they just took each other out. But Kawaki calls out to them saying, you. He grabs one of the sensory ninja and pulls the, his shirt down. The guy goes, huh? Kawaki says, hold still. All the guy struggles saying, well, hey, what the heck? He then rips off the back of the guy's shirt, revealing a claw mark on the nape of his neck. Jeez, how the heck did Code do that? Then again, most people don't really feel when he makes those marks. Kawaki says, a claw mark along the scruff of your neck. The man says, well, and as Kawaki shrinks it, he says, how long? You didn't notice anything? The man says, I don't know. I had no idea. Uh, it looks like Kawaki informed Shikamaru, which so weird to have them cooperating. Shumaru says, what? Are there others? Kawaki says, we're gonna look into that now. Tell everyone who's been on Clawmark search duty to gather in one place, and I'll shrink any that we find one by one. Shikamaru says, that bastard code, what's he plotting? And Kawaki says, hurry up, Master Shika. It's all we can do right now. I'm gonna be honest, it feels like... I heard multiple years pass, but it kinda feels like at most, maybe a year at maximum should have passed because some of the conversations being held feel like they would have happened over the course of a year not multiple we then pick up with some people walking down the streets of the leaf village with one saying he must be exaggerating there it says it's legit plus but he suddenly grabs at the nape of his neck as the other man asks what is it Something comes out of the back of his neck. Is it code? Oh, one of the clawgram emerges from the back of the man's neck. In the sensory ninja office, one of the ninja says, An unknown chakra detected. Who the heck is this guy? We then cut back over to the clawgram striking out of some a random dude on the street, causing him to bash into the side of a wall. A shinobi calls out, 
Kanoa police force here. We need backup stat. But as they face off with the Clawgrim, they hear other people panicking down the street. The man says, don't tell me. They're everywhere? Konohamaru is informed as he says, yes, understood. He tells Shikamaru, they seem to have emerged suddenly in multiple locations at the same time. And there are already, already casualties, including civilians. Oh, casualties. Jeez. Shikamaru says, start the evacuation of non-combatants. Have those who can fight rush to wherever's nearest. Why attack now after all this time, Code? As a woman who has fallen to the ground is menaced by one of the Clawgrim. Suddenly in comes Koaki, enlarging his fists, decking the Clawgrim in the face. As he knocks the Clawgrim back, and he protects the woman, he says, Run now. Follow the Shinobi's instructions. So weird to see him protecting people as the other Shinobi shepherd the civilians to safety, saying, Don't push. Stay, please stay calm. In comes Sarada with a flying kick to one of the Clawgrim's abdomens. And as it hits the ground, she says, one of Ko's Clawgrim's. But where'd it come from? But then she sees something startling. As out of one Clawgrim comes another. Ooh, and another. One from the head, one from the chest. Sarada thinks to herself, they can use each other like claw marks to travel between locations. And out of the back of one comes Code. She's Sarda beating the big boss already. As Code stares down at Sarda, Sarda calls out to Code. And Code, huh, with a scar over his eye. When did that happen? When did he get a scar over his eye? Code says, nice to finally meet you, Sarda Uchiha. I had to look up the time skip. It's been three years, which still feels like a few years too many, but is what it is. As Sarda adjusts her hair, she asks Code, What do you want with Kanoha? Code simply says, I'm looking for Boruto. Sarda says, He isn't here. He left three years ago. And Code says, I know. I've been chasing after him for almost two years now. Jeez. And I'm tired. He's two straight years of chasing. Damn. Code says, I wasn't clear. Let me rephrase. Oh no, Sarda says, I told you he's not here. Go look somewhere else. And Code says, I wasn't clear. Let me rephrase. I've decided to stop looking. That's why I came here. Sarda questions this, but notices a little too late that she's surrounded and the claw grim are closing in. As Code says, I thought I'd have his former friends toward whom he still cares about summon him, starting with you. And as Code smiles, he says, I hope you can scream real pretty so that it will reach him. <laughs> oh, snap! And suddenly, <laughs> Boruto just appears out of nowhere, landing right on Code. Foot Fully in Code's face. Oh man, Code. Even after all this time, you still f come off as a goober. And as Sarda looks on, stunned, Boruto says, It's that kind of sick thinking that creeps girls out. Code me a while. <laughs> he just looks almost pretty much unfazed. He then brings out his claws and tries to swipe at Boruto, who jumps. Uh, but of course, Kawaki immediately senses this, and so does the sensory ninja, saying chakra data matches, and they tell Shikamaru, It's Boruto! Shikamaru says, What? The sensory ninja says, It looks like he infiltrated suddenly from the sky, right above Ko's position. Ada seems to be watching. Sumire! I'm guessing overheard this? And Shikamaru says, listen up, all fighters, you are to prioritize confronting Code and his Clawgrims, but keep an eye on Boruto's movements and try to figure out his plan. The ninjas say, yes sir. And as Boruto stares down Code with Sarada at his back and Clawgrim surrounding, Kawaki calls out, you've finally shown yourself, Boruto. I'm glad we're back. I gotta admit, I wish Sarda had gotten the chance to like really show off some badass moves and I swear to god if Sarda does not get to be awesome I'm gonna be mad because in these three years I need Sarda being an absolute badass though I feel bad because after finally getting to be able to spend time with her dad he was off for three years that kind of sucks <laughs> Jacked up all these kids' childhoods. Boruto looking pretty cool. Wondering what kind of techniques he's learned. I really do feel bad for Sarda though. Boruto got to spend time with his mentor, Sasuke. Even though Sasuke 
doesn't really see Boruto as the person he trained and so on and so forth. But Sarada? Man, she didn't even get to learn Uchiha things. But I, I want people to start kind of feeling that something is off. I want that to happen. I want slowly as time goes on, the likes of Mitsuki, then Himo. Wari, maybe even Shikadai, because Shikadai was pretty close with Boruto. Kona Hammer, too, is just like, man, these guys should... I, I want something to click in their minds. I'm not sure how this is going to work when the anime comes back, though. Because there's still content from the previous series that they still need to adapt. But... Because of the nature of the series, they were able to do a lot of episodic stuff, but with the plot being so at the forefront, I really have to question, is, what's the Boruto anime gonna do when it finally comes back? Maybe they'll do a seasonal anime? That might be for the better if they choose to do it like that. I've always kind of been hit or miss with some of the designs that Ikimoto puts out. And I guess we have to wait until the Leaf Village is mostly destroyed and maybe this will be the moment. <laughs> Wouldn't it be ironic if that's how we start this off with? With the destruction of the Leaf and this climactic battle with Kawaki. Though it would make me wonder what's the rest of the series gonna give us. I, know. I mean, even the two-year time skip for Naruto to ship it in felt a little bit like, eh, okay, I get, it feels like that's about right. I don't know. It just, from my perspective, it always feels like two years is a lot of time. Hell, in this case, three years is a lot of time. And to a certain degree, even when it came to Naruto ship it in, I felt like the only person who really felt like they took the most of an advantage of that time skip was Sasuke. Like, Sasuke was busting out so many moves. But we'll see how things go here, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you think about the new designs on display? What do you think they'll ultimately do in order to help Boruto out, or will this just be his life? He's already spent three years living it. What's the rest of it? But how how does Naruto and Hinata come back? And I feel bad for them. Is that a three years of their kids' lives? Ugh. That, that sucks. Kinda makes me think of Yashihime to a certain degree. And do you think Code will actually do any damage this time? I mean, I feel like he'll just end up in the crossfire for whatever happens between Boruto and Kawaki. But, Ka but Boruto seems to be taking all of this in stride for the most part. Uh, I can't imagine what, everything that's happened not weighing on him to some degree. So again, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed the ride. And until next time, I've been Deuce This Then. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>